Good morning, beloved. I get, uh, the Lord gathered you here today to listen to the Word. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day, and I thank you for every day that you've given us, Lord. I pray that you speak through me, Lord. Use your Holy Spirit to speak through me and to, and to help these people to understand what your Word says. And, uh, and, the, and the people say, Amen. Today we're going to be talking about uh, taking the Lord's name in vain. Taking the Lord's name in vain, the definition of vain, is not yielding the desired outcome, fruitless, lacking substance or worth, in, the, in a irrele irreverent or disrespectful manner. The reading today will be coming from Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. And the word says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Now we've read the definition of vain, which is uh, in a irreverent or disrespectful manner. That's taking the Lord's name and using it in a disrespectful manner. When we call on the name of the Lord, we, ha we, we need to be talking to the Lord. And we do not need to take the Lord's name in vain, uh, using it in a disrespectful order. A lot of people do that these days, and I've noticed this, and, and I sit back and I, you know, and I see it. See, I used to do it too back before I was born again. But once I've become born again, I'm a new creature. As uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, uh, He that is in Christ is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are created new. Now, when we take the Lord's name in vain, and it can be anything just as simple as, you know, you, you think that it's really not a problem, or you think that it's really not an issue, but to the Lord it's a very big issue. It, it, it's along it's along the lines of, of, of being compared to a murder or adultery or homosexuality or fornication. The Lord does not like His name to be used in a disrespectful manner. Saying such things as uh, "Lord, forgive me," "Oh my God," or "Oh my gosh," "Oh my gosh," is, is a substitute for God, and. Uh, you hear, you know, you hear people whenever they're surprised or or something happens that the, that you know, uh, not yielding the desired outcome, and it becomes fruitless. They uh, they didn't get their desired income, so uh, uh, outcome. So immediately they say, "Oh Jesus," or "Jesus Christ," or you know, uh, that's uh, taking the Lord's name in vain. We are not to do so. Uh, I strongly urge you, brothers and sisters, to stop doing this. And another thing I've noticed is, you know, when I'm preaching uh, or, or when I'm uh, when I do text sermons on Facebook or or G Plus or, you know, I notice that people, you know, abbreviate. God bless you, or Jesus bless you, with uh, GBU or JBU, as the Bible tells us. Uh, his, you know, his name is above all names, and when you say uh, JBU, that's taking the blessing away from somebody because you didn't use the name that the Lord gave you to use, and that's the only reason why you should be using that name if you were talking to him. Or if you are asking him to bless somebody, now this is this is this is strongly urged that you understand. Now, the, uh, uh, turn with me to Matthew chapter twelve and verses thirty-six and thirty-seven. Uh, I'll give you time to find it. And while I'm giving you time to find it, 
there's so many things, you know, especially the ungodly. They use the word. They use the, the name of the Lord in vain because they have no respect for the Lord. And when we lack respect for him, knowing that he is our creator, that he is our entire being, and we're only here to worship him, when you use his name in vain, he will not hold you guiltless. And we're about to find that out now in Matthew chapter 12 and verses 36 and 37. Uh, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy word thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. These things that we use, these, 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 you know, uh, 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 they, they say it, uh, they say Christ in disbelief. Something happens that they had no clue that was going to happen, and they immediately they say his name, like that saying he was the cause of it. And that is using his name, the name above all names, in a disrespectful manner. Now, you know, you know, you know, and they also use the words good Lord. Okay, the Lord is good, but why are you, why, what, in what context are you saying good Lord? You know, somebody says something and, and the person is in disbelief and they say good Lord. What does the Lord have to do with that? You know, uh, the Lord hears his name so many times, but it, it, most of the time it's out of context. Uh, turn with me to uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. And uh, while you're having time to find it, I'll uh, tell you a little story. Uh, people use these words so much that they completely disrespect anything that the Lord, I mean, you know, when you say, you know, Jesus Christ, you know, um, uh, immediately you're addressing it to him. And immediately when you address it to him, and then you say, and then you take the Lord's name in vain, what is that saying? I mean, what is, what, what exactly are you saying? I mean, it, you know, uh, you can't believe that that happened? Oh, Jesus Christ, you know, it's, uh, that's completely out of context. And, and, and I feel for the ones that have to face the Lord. 1262. Um, that have to face the Lord and to find out that they've used the Lord's name in vain so many times that, you know, it's just like, why were you constantly calling my name? And then using it in a, a, a negative, derogatory sense. People don't understand because they're blind and they don't see these things. And we are to immediately wake up and realize, hey, I just used the Lord's name in vain, GD. That's another one, you know. Uh, you're asking Jesus, you know, uh, you're asking Jesus to damn something or somebody. That's, that's not acceptable in this lifetime or the next. All right, uh, Colossians chapter 3 verse 17 says, and the word says, And whosoever ye do, in, whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. That is the reason you're to use the words, and that's the reason why you are to use his name. You're not to use his name to damn somebody, you're not to use his name to do anything of that nature. You are to use his name with respect and honor because he demands it. He demands respect and honor. Now, uh, some of you might be questioning the fact that, you know, uh, you say, okay, well, that's an exodus, and uh, 
Hmm. How does that, that's the Old Testament. What does that have? Do you not understand that the, that the gospel is in Exodus? The gospel is talked about in Exodus, and that is the Old Testament. You do, in fact, need the Old Testament. Think about Paul and Peter and John and, and all of them. They didn't have the New Testament to go by. What did they go by? They went by the scriptures in the Old Testament. And uh, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 12 again. And this time we're going to read verses 31 and 32. Uh, and the word says, Wherefore I say unto you, All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, neither the world to come. I thank you, brothers and sisters, for listening to this sermon. I pray that it brings you discernment, and I pray that it brings you increase. Uh, and Lord Jesus, so we thank you today for for giving us your wonderful word and showing us how to live our lives according to the way that you choose for us to. And may your will be done as it is in heaven. That's what your, your word says, and, and I pray that your will be done. And I pray they repent of the things that they're doing. In your blessed, wonderful, precious name, amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for coming by and stopping by and listening to the word. I pray, I pray each and every one of you find, you know, the way and have a blessed day. Brothers and sisters, it's all to call time. With every eye, with every head bowed and every eye closed, by a show of hands, how many does not know the Lord Jesus Christ is your personal Savior? Lord Jesus is calling you today. He wants to save you. He wants to bring you to repentance, and he wants to bring you and, and make you his. But in order to do that, brothers and sisters, you have to, you have to, you have to come to him, and you have to submit your whole lives to him. But just know that, that this is, this is not the end of your salvation. You have to repent from your sins. You have to please the Lord and you have to submit your life to Him completely and entirely. Everybody repeat after me. Lord Jesus, we thank you today. And we thank you for loving us enough to die on that old cross for us and raise, raise again on the third day. We thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers and we thank you for hearing us always, Lord. Lord, today, today is the day of salvation, is what your word says, Lord. Lord, we come to you today and we submit ourselves to you completely and entirely. We admit that we're sinners and we come to you for strength, Lord. We want you to wash us with your blood today, Lord, and we want you to make us a new creature. We want you to wash us with your blood, Lord. We want, you, we want to be yours. We submit our lives to you. We submit our lives completely and entirely to you. We thank you, Lord, and we love you. We love you, Jesus. Wash us with your blood. And we thank you, Lord, for we know we're sinners. We repent today. We repent, Lord, because we want to please you. Come into our hearts, Lord. Lead us on the path of righteousness. Lead us, Lord. Save us, Lord. We want to live holy, for you say you're holy. We must live holy. Thank you, Lord. If you said that prayer, you're on the path to, you're on the path to being saved. In Jesus' name, amen.